Hello there my very good friends, how are you doing today? Uh, a quick video on how I set the motor mounts up and get everything nice and straight. Uh, the key to the game is very low vibration and sound that's coming off it. Uh, and I've set this up for 6 cell. Uh, I've not had it on since uh, the last run which was a good few days ago. Very nice. Right, so yeah, as I'm feeling it, there's very little vibration. No, vi no vibration at all coming through. And it runs, uh, runs a little bit after uh, you take your finger off the throttle. Uh, which, if you've got new rotary seals, it'll stop pretty quick, but they're worn in now. So, okay, first thing I'm going to do is show you the inside of the shaft. So I've undone that first. Sorry, a bit slow going this, isn't it? And then I've got this fella, I undo that. Now that I've undone these four at the back, okay, not nice and easy. Yeah. This should just pull out. Yeah. And there's the rotary seal set up and bearings. Uh, they've pulled down a bit. As you push it in, they'll touch the outside and they'll push back. Yeah. So what you've got is your thrust bearing, collet or sleeve, a bit of a gap two thrust bearings with a bit of grease uh, sorry rotary seals with a bit of grease and then a second guide bearing yeah which has got a little bit of a sleeve on the back just stopping everything from going back and that pushing straight in the slot okay so what am I going to do I'm going to disconnect the motor and I'm going to show you how I would set up uh, everything so that you can get a nice motor mount and fitting together and everything sounds sweet. Okay, I was going to say I've got a little tool uh, but that doesn't sound right. So I've got this big tool here that I've, I've made. Uh, it's just a motor with a couple of scented uh, bits of aluminium which will take a 6 milli shaft and when I put that on there nice and tight on a uh, motor mount when the shaft's coming through here, it'll centre the motor mount and the glue will set underneath it and everything's nice and square, gets rid of the left, rights, ups and downs. But if you haven't got one of those, and I've got to confess I've never tried this, but before you cut your prop shafts down or your, your motor shafts down, if you turn the couplers back to back, uh, you'll have to take the... Uh, Call it off the prop shaft so that it'll push up a little bit further uh, and you put them together uh, they, they may be misaligned slightly as, as I've seen by this one this this one here looks lovely but as we turn this one uh, there will be a gap that appears it is mm, you're not going to see that I can't do it in one hand no maybe I can so I mean, if you want to take the time and just square that up, that one side up so it's nice, as you can see, there's a bit of a gap there, put an arrow, and then it closes up. So, I mean, if you spend a bit of time just to square that up, and you know that you've got two square ends together, once you put them to, you know, put some glue on the bottom of your motor mount and get, get it ready, uh, once you align them, you're going to get a good left to right up and down and probably uh, the other angles as well and they are a little bit forgiving these plumb couplers so uh, you know you shouldn't have too many issues if you try it that way so yeah I would try it like that if I didn't have my big seal all right the uh, the plumb couplers are pretty standard off the internet the only thing I've done is tapped and 
died a little 4mm or 3mm, I think it is, grub screw in there. And that is just to go on the flat uh, on the prop shaft to stop it. And uh, yeah, these two nuts here have them opposite each other, the, the big grub screws, just to try and get a little bit of uh, better weight balancing. That's what I do. Well, so you've got one screw that side and another screw the other side. Yeah, as you can see, man's super slack. Yeah, but as long as everything's lined up nice, it should sound nice. Put a bit of grease uh, in the back of there, in between these two. Squeeze it open a little bit at the back there. Yeah. There is one bearing at the end here, which is going to be the thrust bearing, and that sleeve just clips up to it. A bit of look, let's get in there. Make sure there's plenty of grease on the outside of the uh, uh, rotary seals as well, so they're not difficult to get out. Okay, I don't know if I'm repeating myself, uh, but do not, when you're setting the motor up for the first time, have your uh, rotary seals in because they'll overheat. You need to run them first in water, make sure everything's all right, set up sweet as a nut, uh, and then take the impeller out, put these back on, slip it in, and then go and take it to the pond, yeah, and break them in that way. Uh, otherwise they can overheat if they're not cooled and worn in properly. Okay, I've pushed the impeller in as far as it'll go, yeah? Just a little, it's gone in just a little bit further than the edge of here. Yeah, we know that's in as far as it goes. But then looking at the coupler, we've got the aluminium which is virtually touching here, yeah? And what I like to do is just leave a little gap, yeah? So that all the stress is on the... Uh, plastic bit in the middle. Make sure I can't push that in anymore. No. And I'm going to leave that at that. Tightening this one up first on the flat. Yeah. And then tightening the big one up after that. And no need to go any higher or harder. And just a little nip. This is just to hold it. That grub screw on the flat. Okay, so if I push that now hard, well I'll pull it back first. There you go. Yeah, I've just got a little bit. There's no metal touching there. Keep the sound down. If that metal's touching, you get a bit of a din, and the vibrations will travel around the box. Okay, so I'm going to put the back on, and then I'm going to put the electrics on and start spinning it how it sounds. Okay, right, you'll have to excuse my dirty prototype. It's had a few bonfires, a bit of grease thrown on it, and it, by the looks of it, a bit nibbled off it. <laughs> uh, but okay, I've got everything done up and I'm using 6 cell so I'm plugging that in uh, and what I'm going to do is I've got things actually just moving around freely and I'm just going to see if we can let it find its own centre and how nice it sounds first to give us an idea if we've got something that's way out uh, so what I, this is the way I would do it is holding it nice and flat up against the motor mount. Sounds like a bag of nails there. You see how I pulled it to one side it sounded rough but centralised. It did have a nice tone to it so there is something there to nip. 
So what I would do now would be to get the Allen key, which is always a mile away. I've probably moved it now, but we'll try it again before we lock it up. It just drops it again, having to get that. You couldn't believe it, would you? Hang on. Now we're trying to keep that sound that we've got there, which was just pure bliss. So that's why we didn't want to have too much to have to tighten up here. I'm sorry if my hand's in the way. I'm just going to gently nip these up, not overly tighten them, just to see if we are where we need to be. Just so it's not going to move when I put a little bit of power on. Hang on. vibration coming through uh, so I'm gonna go and I'll do it a bit more I'm now going to nip that up nice and tight okay take my hands off it move. Now can we get it sounding any better? Imagine it sounds a little bit rougher than that. Can we get it to sound like that? We're gonna t you'd, what you're going to find out is if your motor mounts slightly out is by getting some pressure on the motor and as you're spinning it pull it one way push it the other way and if the sound gets better uh, when you're putting pressure on it or pushing down or pulling up a little bit that means that your motor mount is either slightly out or you've got some sort of misalignment. Uh, now, a good thing for packing motor mounts, believe it or not, is if you can get a fresh piece of this stuff. Aluminium foil. Yeah, it's dead thin. And if you fold it a couple of times, or well, one time, it, it doesn't compress. So you'll be able to just move, just put the slightest of tenth of a millimetre at a time sort of movement if needed. So I'm just going to hold this. We know that it sounds great in the middle. And then I'm going to start pulling it and hopefully you'll be able to see by my hand pressure which way I'm pulling and pushing. That's beautiful. If it was slightly, I'm going to put some, get my fingers underneath it and just lift it a bit. Sounded crap when I put the pressure on, so you know that your left up and down is beautiful. <laughs> Nothing going on at the Ritz, baby. Yeah, it's hot enough to trot that. I'm happy with that. So yeah, everything's rocking and rolling. Uh, I hope that was uh, informative. That's how it needs to sound, nice and clean, with minimal vibration. Uh, we've got it to sound a little bit rough by lifting it higher, didn't we? You don't want to, you want to avoid the, the rough one. I'm going to go for that nice smooth one. All right then, wonderful mates, okay, that's how you get them rocking and rolling. Hopefully sounding like a dentist drill. Uh, I'm not going to overcook it. Okay, keep the vibrations down mate. 
and have a lovely evening. All the very best. Toodaloo, toodaloo. If you found this video informative and helpful and would like to help me fund other videos in the future by patronising me, you can't because I don't bother with any of that. I'm too bloody busy in here. <laughs>